Good morning. Welcome to the shop. It is the time in between Christmas and New Year's, which is what I love because it's quiet in the shop. It's a little chilly. We've got the heat going on, which for Georgia is uh, pretty rare, but it, it's a little chilly. But we are going to, I like to do small projects. And today we are doing a special project because this is for my brother in law. What I wanted to try was taking a, this is a $15 axe from Harbor Freight. It's a pound and a quarter head and it has a nice hickory handle. So it's a pretty decent hatchet for, especially for the price, but it's actually well constructed. But there's a few things I don't like about it. One, the angle of the blade is about 45 degrees. I want to take that down to about 30. And the hickory handle is nice. It's got a good shape, but it is way too thick. It, it just doesn't feel comfortable in the hand. Uh, I like the shape of it, but we need to make it a little thinner, a little sleeker, a little bit better to hold on to. So the way that we're going to get this set up is we're going to clamp our hatchet to our table here. We've got a little bit of support wood underneath the blade there so it doesn't move. This is a half inch piece of MDF. We're just going to lay our file onto the blade and this should change the angle of our uh, blade from 45 to 30 degrees. So this is only going to be a 15 degree angle going uh, this way and then we'll flip it over and 15 degrees on the other side and we'll give us about 30. So we're doing rough numbers. We're not going to be uh, get it exact but I wanted to get a little bit sharper there. Now that we got the blade sharp how we like it, I put some blue tape just to protect it. Let's work on the handle next. Now this is my old Boy Scout hatchet. It served me well. Um, I wanted to mimic the thickness of it because this is a lot thinner than the uh, one we're working on. Uh, it is a little too thick down here that I like, but it this is about the right uh, thickness for a handle. I know this is way up. I would never hold it chopping like that but I'm going to use this thickness uh, lower on the hatchet that we're going to be working on so I think we're going to hold it right about here so we're just going to lay this on top and we'll do some uh, measurements I'm just going with the natural curve of the hatchet and that's about right we're just going to shave off just a little bit here I think the big thing is not the shape, it's more just the thickness of the handle. But we'll take off a little bit. So we got something like that. Take, take it off here, but the big thing is, is we're going to take a, a, a lot of the thickness off right here in between the two. So I'll cut it down a little bit and then we'll work on sanding the thickness down because it's not much, it's just a little bit. Now that we've got the shape 
form roughly of how we want it to feel. I'm just going to take it down a little bit and, and smooth it out with a hand sander. So I didn't go crazy with the sanding, you just need to take it to 150. I would just use 150 and it gets it smooth enough. And you want you don't want to get it too uh, high of a grit because then it'll polish the wood and it won't take the uh, whatever finish you're going to do. I'm going to use boiled linseed oil uh, to wipe it down just to get it soaked in there. And that's pr probably the best finish to put on there so you don't get blisters uh, in the future. And it, it wears well and puts a nice patina on the handle. And I did, I didn't notice it. Uh, but the way this turned out, being thin here and then thicker at top, it kind of reminds me of a fireman's axe. And my brother-in-law used to be a fireman, so kind of is fitting for that. We, uh, I do want to put a, a hole here for a leather uh, strap, and uh, we'll do that next, and then we'll wipe it down. So on my hatchets, I like to have the back of the head to be flat because I use it as a hammer. And uh, it's kind of rounded right now, so I'll, I'm just going to grind it down to make it somewhat flat so it'll be usable if you ever need a, a nice hammer. So to finish it off, we're just going to take a 150 grit sandpaper on our sander and just even it out uh, what we got off the grind to make it nice and smooth. And that looks real good. We're going to leave it matte. I'm not going to polish it. I think that matte look looks real nice on it. So it's nice and flat. Good hammering surface. Okay, for the sheath, we are going to make one similar that I made for this axe. It is um, black leather. I think it was five to six ounce. And I made a little wooden toggle that I uh, turned on the lathe. And it just is a little strap that goes around with a slot. Just try to make it nice and simple. So just briefly, we traced out the X on the piece of paper so we get the outline of it. Then we decided on um, the sheath pattern. And basically the curve, I just usually do it to match the uh, X curve. And then everything else, we'll just measure five, uh, 5 eighths of an inch out and all the way around. So you do 5 eighths of an inch, 5 eighths of an inch. And that is for... Uh, for the rivets and your uh, thread, your stitching. That gives you your pattern, so we'll cut that out and then we will trace it onto the leather. And there you go, that's the pattern for the leather. So let's get the leather out and start cutting. So here's a good piece right here. We'll just use this scrap end. And then we'll take a scratch all and mark out the outline. So what I'm going to try to do is put the two pieces on top of each other and cut it out at once, or trim it up at least at once. So let's cut the two pieces out. We'll give it a try, see how that works. This piece right here barely fits, so we're going to get, we'll use this piece right here. Alright, so you got to make sure you turn them opposite of each other so you get a mirror image of each piece here, I'm going to cut my blade to make it sharp the sharper the blade the easier it is to cut this so now we just got to make sure we we stay perpendicular as we cut and then I like to use a straight edge here when cutting as straight straight lines as much as possible. Perfect. Before we glue this up, let's make this. We need to sew the strap uh, that's going to hold the uh, this onto the hatchet. So let's cut the piece out now for that. So to determine the length of the strap that I'm going to need, I just take a piece of string to measure. I like to make it long. I can always cut the strap short uh, later. So we come around here. It's going to come around the back end of the head and then come out to about here. So we're going to make it, so we need something about this long right here. 
So we'll make this strap about three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna, I already got a straight edge here. So we just need to make a few lines here. And then we take our straight edge and line her up. So we're gonna need something about here, that long. All right, one strap. So now we've got to sew the strap on. So we got to figure out the angle that we want the strap to be at. So I think we're going to want it something like, let's see here, something like that. And we'll bring it around. So that's about where it needs to be. So I'm just going to mark it lightly. Give us an idea of where it needs to be. So I'm going to do a little score in here where we are going to glue just to rough it up a little bit. We're going to add some uh, quick and thick. We just need something to hold it while we uh, stitch it. We'll stick that on there. Get the Get everything lined up and then we'll clamp it. So we'll let this sit for a little while and then we'll come back and start stitching. Alright, so it's been about 10 minutes. Everything's dry enough for what we need it to do. So we're going to take and make our holes for our stitches. over to our stitching pony and we'll get our stitches made. We're probably a little unnecessary but I love using this thing. This is something we built a while back. Uh, there's a link to the video uh, down below and uh, makes things easier when sewing things up. So the choice of thread today is going to be uh, blue. So I like to use a straight hook. I mean a straight needle and a hook uh, when I'm doing this. We're done. So now we'll just glue the two halves together so we'll get a little bit of our quick and thick. We'll line the two pieces together nicely. And we'll use binder clips. I think these work the best to hold things together here. We'll let that dry and then we'll come and start sewing the two pieces together. Everything should be dry, so let's take these off here. Perfect, perfect. So we want to fit, just do a test fit here. That works. You probably cut it a little bit. The top might be a little tall. We might trim that down a little bit. But first, let's get the rivets in here in the corners, and then we'll know where we need to, where our measurement's going to be. And also, we need to cut a hole on this side for our toggle. So we need to punch holes for that also. So we're going to use antique brass rivets for the corners. I like to put the cap on there just to kind of get it see, see where it's going to fit and then just push it and that leaves a little indention in there and that'll be the place where we mark our hole we'll just do a test fit stick the rivet in like that there you go so now that we know that's going to be there 
And you gotta leave enough room here to get your blade in at the top. Let's see here. So I think we might bring it down just a tad bit here. Maybe something like that. And that'll be the mark of the other rivet. So that means we can take off that amount, whatever that is on the rivet. Take three sixteenths off. How about that? Maybe we'll just eyeball it. All right. I think we'll knock this, these corners down too. Well, we'll do that later. We'll come back and do that later. Now we just need to figure out the rivets for the other corners. You know, as I was looking at it with the uh, rivets in here, this is so small, I don't think it needs any stitching. I think I'm gonna put one more rivet up here just to close it up, and then we're just gonna leave it as is without it. Um, I think it'll look just fine with it because it's just it's a lot smaller than the axe. You don't have a lot of space in between the uh, rivets. And so I don't think it's needed in this situation. So let's go ahead, we'll add one more here and then we'll start uh, installing the rivets. Okay, theoretically, both sides should look the same after you're hammering it. But I always like to put the good side down and then uh, put the cap on top and hammer on the cap side. So, we'll get that set up, and we'll get our mallet, get us a nice set there. We'll do a little test fit. Oh yeah, that fits real good. So now what we're going to do is mark our strap here. It's going to go like that. So we're probably going to want our toggle holes to be right here. And there, that's for the lacing. And for the toggle, we'll just cut a little slit right through here. And then we'll just cut a little slit here for the toggle to go through. Probably need to cut some holes. We'll punch a hole here at the end. Perfect. All right, we're almost done. Let's make us a toggle. So I decided to make a change. We're going to take uh, this piece of leather and use it uh, as part and make a knot. And that's where the strap will tie on to. Like that. And then the toggle that we just made, we will use that uh, on the uh, wrist strap on the end. So we'll still use it. But I decided because of the size of this, it's so small that we will uh, just make a simple knot. What knot that's going to be, I'm not sure yet. Let's see what we got here. And I don't know if the hole's even big enough yet for what we're intending to do. Let's just do a test knot here. 
Yeah, it's probably too small. So what I think I decided to do is we're just going to do an overhand knot with both of them together. Like so. It's a big knot. Maybe not. Let's see here. We're going to have to cut our hole bigger. Let's put the strap on here. We'll feed these through. It's kind of help guide it. And then we'll pull a strap over the knot. It might still be too. That'll work. There you go. Just like that. And then the knot will hold it, keep it taut. That's pretty tight. I like it. Alright, let's cut the ends off here. Something like that. Cut it off at an angle. Pull the knot tight. There you go. So that should work here. You just run the, the line through. Around the knot. There you go. I like it. That'll work. Let's work on the handle strap. Alright, so I drilled pilot holes through first. Now we're going to drill a little bigger hole for the leather. Alright, to finish this bad boy off, let's put the toggle on here with the leather wrist strap. So we'll put those up there. We'll put this one up here. Tie a knot. There we go. We'll do a little chop chop. And that, my friends, is an awesome birthday present. There you go. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.